Good evening, viewers. My name is Sir Nigel Timothy Carlton, and this week we'll be discussing the Siege of Masada. I'm joined by historical commentator Winslow Grandy. Hey, PBS, cheers. Now, Mr. Grandy, you spent most of your career studying these events, so when I say the word Masada, what emotions does that bring to mind? Well, it brings you back to the whole reason I got in interested in Jewish studies. You know, my, my mother talked about the myth of Masada, and hearing those stories as a kid really drove me to, to want to learn more. I see, well, perhaps some context would be helpful. Yeah, long well, story short, uh, a bunch of Jews held out against the Romans, knew they were going to lose, killed themselves, that's it. Now, most of our viewers are already desperately trying to switch to the Food Network, but the producers say we have to fill the allotted time, so... Perhaps a few more details? Yeah, well let me preface this, viewers. In the words of Uncle Sam, I want you to stay watching the public television. Got that? Um, so basically, uh, there were some, some Jews hold out in the mountains, and, and uh, they were revolting against the Romans. And they uh, decided that instead of, you know, the obvious defeat and you know, the harsh treatment that would come as, as a result that they would commit mass suicide. And uh, the question behind the myth is that we're not exactly sure if that happened or not. We don't know if the, if the Romans beat them to the punch, if you will, and uh, killed them all. But I think today, in this episode, viewers, we're going to find out really what happened at that myth of Masada. Perhaps it would be best to start from the beginning. So most of what we know about the myth of Masada and the siege itself comes from this Jewish, Jewish historian, uh, Josephus, Josephus Silvus, who uh, was a Jewish rebel leader caught by the Romans um, and thus avoided, however, uh, the fate that the rest of his Jews share. And so uh, he became a Roman historian instead, and so, in my opinion, I think he uh, ended up getting a pretty good deal of things. Not that great a deal. I used to be a historian once, but that didn't keep mother in heads. So now I host this show. Okay. Um, so basically it all began with King Herod, this Jewish lord, built this big palace on top of a hill called Masada. Um, originally there had been a fort there before, but he kind of said to himself, you know, I'm not really well liked, uh, Cleopatra's looking at my stuff, um, my people hate me, got a lot of other enemies, um, and so I think this place looks like a sweet crib, and so I think I'm going to keep this as my stronghold. Fascinating. What next? Well, uh... He was pretty unpopular. Not a lot of people liked him, like many other tyrants of his day, um, which was no surprise at all. And uh, a lot of people were uh, trying to take over, and eventually he died. And so Judea uh, went into turmoil. And so the Roman Empire, in its gracious and benevolent manner, went over and sent some people to try and govern. So, uh, in typical Roman fashion, they uh, tried to respect the Jewish customs and beliefs, um, which made it easier to govern. However, before long, um, the Romans decided that they wanted to have a little bit more authority and uh, power over this area. So they said, screw your customs, screw your beliefs, we're in charge now. And the Jews didn't take kindly to that, and so they uh, began to resist, you know, revolts started happening, and uh, basically uh, that's what uh, led to the siege of Masada and what we know about today. Now, our viewers seem to have a singularly disturbing interest in Rome, so can you tell us what was happening in that city during this time period? Yeah, I'll never get what your fascination is with Rome, but uh, basically there's a lot of political turmoil, there's a lot going on, a lot of 
change of command. Um, it's pretty confusing, even for people like me. Um, but there's some, there's like four emperors in one year. I think they called it the year of four emperors. And uh, there's this guy, Flavius Silva, who either was the general or the emperor. No, he was the general. Because there's this guy named Vespasian who took over. He might have been the fourth fourth emperor of that year. Um, I'm not quite sure, but he sent over Flavius Silva in the year 73. CE or AD, depending on who you ask. Um, sent him over to Mossad and said, I want this revolt put down, and I want it done by any means possible. I think I'm gonna lie down. Well, it seems my colleague has been overcome by emotion. The producers are telling me we have a special guest, Roman General Flavius Silver. Don't get overly excited, it's going to be some want-to-be actor in a funny hat. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Silver. Thanks for having me. Well, Masada was a really interesting... What up, Flavius Flav? I think he may have wor worshipped uh, Bacchus a little bit too hard last night, if you know what I mean. Now, uh, if you could go back to Masada, would you change anything? Well, the outcome was what we wanted, but me and my men did not attain the honor and prestige we would have gotten if we were able to battle the Jewish holdout. And we lost about 790 good slaves. Well, that's certainly a very interesting take on the historical narrative. Thank you for your time, Mr. Silver. Can I get another scotch over here? What's like, well, I'm sorry, I don't mean to put too fine a point in there, but you appear to have shrunk. No, mind. I'm good as ever. I'm good old Brandy Winslow, you know? Here and ready to talk about some mass suicide. It seems my producers have made yet another factual error that I was told your name was Winslow Brandy. No, no. I'm just, just saying it, you know, Asian style, like surname first. And can we just, can we just, just do it? Very well. Let's get on with the siege itself. The Romans had no. No, no, no. Come on, I got it. I got it. Just leave, just leave it to me. All Anyways. right. But yesterday, I spent 13 hours trying to teach ravens to fly underwater so they could find the city of Atlantis and redeem my reputation. And I'd like to do the same thing today, so can you hurry up? So, so the Romans, they get to Masada, and Masada is like this huge hill. Like, think of the biggest they've ever seen, and it's like, like that big. And then they're like, Fabius is like, well, how are we going to get to the top? And then the soldiers are like, I don't know. And so, so there's, there's two paths that go up, up this hill, and the first one is really narrow. It's really, really narrow. And... And it, it kind of up the hill, and it's on it's on the on the east side, and they call it the snake path because because perhaps it looks like a snake. I don't know, and they just they just call it that because they can. And then the next path, it's it's the same kind of thing. It's it goes to the top, but there's there's a camp at the top, and there's no way you're going to move an army up these paths, and so. Flavius is like, well, guess what, guys? We're gonna build a ramp up to the top, and then the, his, his guys are like, okay, whatever you say, Flavius. And so they build this ramp up to the top, and and it took them a really long time. But but Flavius was like, you know what? We're gonna build a ramp, and that's what he did. How big was this ramp? I I'm no mathematician, but it was big. Yeah. I see. Well, go on. So, the flavors was like, okay, we're going to build this ramp. And it took them so long to build this ramp. And that's why it's called, like, the, the siege of Masada instead of the battle of Masada, because it, it took forever. But anyway, so they got this ramp, and they got it up, they got it up the hill, and they started moving, 
room there, their siege tower up, and they had all these weapons and stuff, and the archers, and they saw a duel on the way, they just kind of like shot at him and killed him, which is sad, but, but anyway. So then they get to the top, and they get their battering ram, and, and they take the ram, and they like over and over again, you know, until, until the, the wall goes down, and, uh, um, um, and then, um, and then, so they, they break down the wall, but then there's a second wall. There's number two, wall number two. Wall number two isn't like wall number one, but Flavius is like, that's okay. Like, I know how to break down the wall because it was the one that crisscrosses behind, behind the first part of the wall. And and so he's like, guys, you know what to do. Just like, just torch it down and, and then we'll go home while it's burning. And then when the sun comes up tomorrow, we'll come back. And and we'll we'll get everybody. We'll kill them and we'll take them as our slaves. But I I don't really know why he didn't just do it right then. Well, neither do I. The producers have just told me that we have another historical figure coming on the program. Josephus Silvus, the Jewish Roman historian, Mr. Silvius. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, Siege of Masada? That was one of the last uh, battles in the Jewish Revolt. I myself was in charge of a different battle. We, uh, everyone wanted to commit suicide, and they did, except me. I surrendered and was forced to... Look, Mr. Silvius, I think your career might have gone a bit further if you would try a little less hard in your scenes. All we want to do is hear about the Battle of Masada. Is the historical account accurate? Well, I th think that the Siege of Masada deserves more than a 15 minute show on public television with a drunk narrator, and I don't appreciate being called onto the show just to have my account publicly insulted. Mr. I, Silvius. I, I don't we think I want to be here anymore. I can't take it. No, no. Well, he's dramatic. How does he know what public TV is? What? And, and like a, a spotlight? Isn't he supposed to be from 70 AD or something? Look, I've already told you, these people are actors. He's not a Jewish historian. Next time you see that man's face, it's going to be being ripped off in some sort of B-horror movie. Or, more likely, he'll be in a pool. <laughs> okay, sure. Can, can we just go back to... Yeah. Okay, great. So, so, the cigarette, like, alright guys, like, they're, we know what's coming, and and they're gonna. The Romans are coming in the morning, and when they get here, we're all gonna be goners. And so their ruler guy, Elzar, Elzar Ben Ben or something or other, he's like, guys, I know what to do. Fuck that noise. We're not gonna let that happen. So he gets up in front of the crowd, ready to give his speech. Now and I don't mean to be rude and interrupt you, but this is the only part of my job which is remotely bearable. So I will be giving this speech. Speech. But the speech was already done. We're, we're wrapping up. We're going. We you guys, are doing the speech. That was like three days ago that you ran off. We are doing this speech. I don't have the... We've been on the spirit quest. We're ready to do the speech. You know what? Fine. You want to do your speech? Fine. We'll do the speech. We'll roll it. Brave and loyal followers, long ago we resolved to serve. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got this. So, we're all about serving God and shit, and we've never been saved before, so I, I think we shouldn't do that kind of stuff now. For we were the first to revolt, and the last to break off the struggle. It is God who has given us this privilege, that we can die nobly and as free men. Yeah, and when that sun comes up, we're gonna die. So rather than just wait for others to do that, let's just get it over with, because we can't beat them. Let our wives die unabused, our children without knowledge of slavery. 
After that, let us do each other an ungrudging kindness, preserving our freedom as a glorious winding sheet. But first, let's burn this place to the ground. Hell yeah, that'll show those assholes. One thing only let us spare, our store of food. It will bear witness when we are dead to the fact that we perished. Not through want, but because. Being dead is way better than being sick. Cut it! I'm sorry, what? Look, if you interrupt me one more time, I swear to God, I will cut all your skin off and add it to my collection. No, don't look at me like that. I really have a collection of skin. That's impractical. Think of the smell. Oh, you didn't think of the smell, did you? <laughs> oh, I can't believe this is my life. You're a weird dude. Can we just get back into it now? Trust me. Come while our hands are free and can hold a sword. Let them do a noble service. So let's all kill each other, yeah. Look, I'm gonna slash your face off of your face. I swear to God. We'll see how you feel when you don't have a face. We're just gonna, we're just gonna. Are you happy? We did it. You yeah. feel better about did yourself? Uh, did you hear about the uh, problems on the other set? You might have to call in a, a cleaner. Let's just say a cleaner. What, do you, what is that even supposed to mean? I don't... I'll ask some of my connections, they'll know. C what connections? You're a failed destroy... Where you got... I'm not getting paid overtime for this, are you really leaving? These filmmakers are crazy, aren't they? Yeah, I'm done. I'm just done. I'm just gonna... We're rolling. The producers are telling me that we have one more guest, a Mr. Elazar. Look, I can't pronounce his last name. Can we just get on with this? So do I just talk into this thing don't here? Don't pretend like you don't know. Very well. I certainly didn't expect to be sitting here thousands of years in the future. Everybody here knows you're an unemployed actor. Just read the script we gave you. Very well. What would you like to know? You're saying you gave a speech? Yes, I did. Though, it wasn't quite as aggressive as your partner made it sound. It had more delicacy, finesse. It, it held meaning, sorrow. And, and if you had to do it again, would you give that same speech and commit suicide? I am always ready to give my life for the Jewish people. Producers are telling me I have to ask one more question in this sad pretense that you actually are a dead Jewish warrior. So, did it actually happen? That, I cannot say. How are we paying this much money for actors, and then they show up, they can't give straight answers, and they can't stick with the script that we give them? You have insulted my heritage and my acting skills! But, but mostly my heritage! <laughs> Awfully sorry, I seem to have made a bit of a mess. Can someone come and deal with this for me? Thank you. You know, I just hate thespians. You know, I was in the middle of something, but if you just want to go and cut me off... Look, I would rude. love to cut you, but then I have a nice fish to eat when I get home, or at least when my ravens catch one. So let's just hurry this up, please. So, the cigarette draw a lottery to figure out who's going to stop who. And, and the reason they don't do it themselves is because the New Testament technically forbids suicide, but, but it's okay to be a martyr, because that's okay, that's okay. Suicide, no, but martyr, yes. But, so that, that just didn't stop. Them. And then, so they all started stabbing each other one by one, women and, and wives, and, and, and even little children. And, and some say that a few women and children hid and stayed alive, but, but no one really knows because no one really knows anything about Masada, is it, if it's true or not. So then, then the Romans get to the top in the morning when the sun rises, like they said they were going to, and uh, they're they're kind of horrified by everything. They're just like, damn, that's that's messed up. But then they realize that the Sikari were like, they're like, I'm, I'd rather die than surrender and be your slaves. So 
they they kind of treated them with some honor and dignity. And well, I mean that's that's what Joseph has said. The question seems to be, did it really happen? Well, I don't know. I mean, there's there's not much evidence to back it up besides Joseph as whether it really actually happened or really actually didn't happen actually, but but Israel still honors the site today, and the new guardsmen from Asada are required to swear that they will honor it with pride and dignity. But even that, not everyone really agrees with, because it, it was a really nationalistic kind of thing to do, if you ask me. So some more liberal people are like, we shouldn't honor a bunch of people who committed suicide? That's crazy! And then the more conservative ones are like, will you smell that? And then the liberals go, no, that's you, and and I think that's how politics work. And um, that's Miss Ada. Well done, Winslow. Thank you. Um, but but I have a question. What? How did we get all those people that have been dead for like two thousand years to come back? back and, and, and talk to us. Like I said, those are actors. What they do is they go out on the street and find the three most desperate looking people they can, tell them they'll pay them a bit to come in here and pretend to be someone from the past. Okay. Yep, and that's how it is in Hollywood. Okay. Now, that is the story of Nasada. Did it happen? Did it not happen? It seems you can make up your own mind about that, but whatever you think, it is certainly an interesting, interesting time period in history, and a great way to show exactly how things were happening in the classical age. For all of us here at the studio, this has been Winslow Brandy and Nigel Carlton. Join us next week, where we go to Victorian London and look at the Whitechapel murders, we'll find out exactly who did those killings. That is, if you survive the night. <laughs>